Okay, let's move on to Mauna Loa, uh, the other volcano that's always on our mind. Mauna Loa, too, is, re is, re -accumulate, is accumulating magma in its shallow reservoir system. You may remember we went through a period from 2014 to early 18 where this was happening. The volcano was inflating as magma was entering the reservoir. We saw higher earthquake rates. And then, interestingly, in 2018, right around the time Kilauea erupted, things went a little quiet. Uh, and that may, may not be coincidental. Well, that trend reversed itself in late 2018, and now we are again seeing Mauna Loa inflate. And because of that, we uh, raised the alert level for the volcano back in, in July. And that trend has continued. Here are some data to show that. This is a GPS stations at the summit of the volcano. Here's Mokuuveuveo caldera. And uh, this is a GPS plot for the station at MOKP and MLSP on the south side of the caldera. And again, basically note that the upward trend of these GPS plots through time reflect the rising of the ground, not a lot, five centimeters, 10 centimeters or so, a few inches over this five year period. All of that reflecting accumulating magma in the shallow reservoir. At the same time, we're seeing increased earthquake activity, just like we did between 14 and early 18. Here's the summit of the volcano outlined here below this cloud of shallow earthquakes, which also extend into the upper southwest drift zone. And then there's a cluster here on the west. So these earthquake patterns have been persistent, and they continue today. And what's interesting about them is that they're similar patterns that we saw prior to the 1975 eruption at Mauna Loa and 1984 eruption of Mauna Loa. So it's following some of the same patterns, but we cannot say that we're a month away, a year away, or 10 years away from an eruption. It's just we don't know that well enough. We would expect to see significant changes in the rates of these earthquakes prior to an eruption. So we expect a fair bit of warning. Another way to look at that earthquake activity at Mauna Loa is in this plot. This goes back to 2010. And these are earthquakes per week underneath uh, the summit of the volcano of all magnitudes. Here's the period in 2014 when things started to perk up. And we went to uh, alert level advisory. And we stayed there for a few years. Here's that qu quiet-ish period in 2018 when we were below 50 earthquakes a week. And then in late 18 and into 19, you can see we've had an increase in the weekly average earthquakes with some big spikes. So this is why we feel comfortable saying we're above kind of a long-term quiet that persisted before 2014. What does this look like in cross-section? This is a, an old plot, but it still holds. This is a model result uh, done by Ingrid Johansson at HVO back in 2017. So this is a cross-section through the volcano, Mauna Loa. You can imagine the summit is up here. We're looking into the volcano. This dotted line is sea level. And the colors here, from very dark to light yellow, uh, you can imagine that this, this represents the amount of opening that has occurred within the volcano as magma has moved into it to, to fill and engorge that shallow reservoir system. So we've had up to a meter or about a yard of, excuse me, basically expansion within that part of the volcano to accommodate this incoming magma. That explains the summit deformation pattern. And this cloud of circles here are some of the earthquakes that happened uh, in the period 2014 to 2017. They all occur kind of at the top of that region of expansion, which is what you'd expect where the rocks are being stressed and strained by this accumulating magma. What's next for Mauna Loa? More of the same, most likely. There's really no sense that that trend of inflation and accumulation is about to change. One of the interesting questions we're pondering is what is the impact that, of the Kilauea eruption in 2018 on Mauna Loa? Clearly, the Kilauea volcano relaxed a lot in 2018. It collapsed. It sort of relieved some pressure on Mauna Loa. Did that, does that mean that it's easier for Mauna Loa to erupt now? Can magma decompress more rapidly and come to the surface? Or does that mean it's more less likely to erupt now because pressure has been relieved? We're not really sure what that answer is. But there may be an impact. Um, an important thing I'd like to point out, though, about Mauna Loa is that damaging flank earthquakes are possible at any time. And the reason that's relevant is that prior to 75 and 1984 eruptions, there were ma moderate magnitude, 6.6 .6 and 5.5 earthquakes uh, months before the eruptions. So if we have an earthquake of that magnitude range somewhere on the flank of Mauna Loa, uh, HVO will be at a slightly heightened